when the establishment hear the name Tommy Robinson, they fear it. That's not because they fear me. It's because they fear you. We created a movement. It wasn't about me. They know that behind me and when, with my name comes masses of people, a community. And we've been quiet for a few years. And I sense the excitement. Since the, since the rape of Britain, I've seen the excitement. I've seen that people are ready again. And we're making a lot of noise. But that's all it's going to be is noise. If we want to bring change, if we want to strike fear into the heart of the establishment, there's only one way we do that, and that is politically. And I stood and listened carefully at our first episode of The Rape of Britain in Telford, and I watched a passionate speech given by one of the guests there. And she said, she will not rest until the day she is in Parliament. And I've decided that I won't rest until the day she's in Parliament. And that's why I'd like to announce now to you that I'm joining Fort Britain. And welcome, Anne Marie. Oh, welcome, Tony. <laughs> that time you saw sense. I know, because you, <laughs> and, and that's where I want to start. I want to, I want to start on an apology. Yeah? Oh, you don't owe me any apology. No, I do, no, I do, because no. I do, because for, for all of my years of activism, you've stood staunchly, yeah, every time behind me. And I was faced with a decision two, three years ago, which was, I know that to bring about change, we need to go political. Yeah? And I made the decision, there was yourself and there was UKIP. What I didn't realise at the time was, is it the NEC of UKIP? I didn't realise it was the establishment. Yeah? So I had to weigh things up and I made a decision of what was in the best place to be a success, what had the best background and start to, to, to work. And I chose UKIP. And I believed in Jared Batten and I had no awareness of what was within UKIP. And they destroyed that because they, it, it, they feared it. It did start and there was a bit of electrifying moment then across the country with Brexit rallies and mass movement. And I, I, they joined, thousands of people joined and you must have felt betrayed. Because I did betray you. No, it's not. I actually, I know I betrayed you and I felt difficult at the time. I know I did. I knew why you did it. I knew you were wrong to do it because I'd already been in it. Oh. And I joined it probably with the same thoughts as you, yeah. that we can make, we can, you can establish, we can sort of not take it over, but you know what I mean, bring it, change it from the inside, if you like. Mm. I saw what was inside it. That leadership election, I saw what was really inside it. They went for me. And I knew that that was, that was what it was. I it bones, the that's what it was. And they were terrified of the press, absolutely terrified of the press. And I knew when I came out with their people, I had a choice to make when I came out, after the leadership election, Shall I leave or shall I wait to see what happens with Henry Bolton? And as it happens, he was gone a few months later. But it was the right thing to do because it's, it is establishment. It has adopted the establishment line in order to stay in the public eye. And my, I know deep down that if you are adapting the media's line to stay in the public eye, then you are not what this country needs. We need someone who doesn't care what the media says. We need someone who's going to go out there to the local people, community groups, council estates, at the bottom. Get in, get in with the people, get them to trust you. They don't trust politicians at all. They don't trust politics, and who can blame them? But we need to get out there on the streets and speak to people. The media is not the answer to this. We can, you know, to become a national party, you need the media. But my thinking is, start winning first, and then the media will have to come to you. But we have to get out there. I agree, and I, I asked people, when I joined UKIP, I asked people to, if you're watching this, I, if you joined because I asked you to join, thousands did, their membership went through the roof when we aligned ourselves. And unfortunately, you were sold a lie. We were all sold a lie. You were betrayed, I was betrayed. Everyone, Jared Batten was betrayed, people were betrayed. Um, but I'm gonna ask you again, okay? You want to strike fear into them, which we have to do. You want to bring about change, then join for Britain. Give them, we can go on the streets, yeah? and I'm going to continue to, which is what I said, I want to do my journalism. Yeah? I want to do my journalism, but when I stand out and see three, four, five, ten thousand people, I want to know that that's a political weapon. I want to know that they're politicised, because they want us not involved in politics. They want the working class not understanding politics, Absolutely. not caring about politics. Okay? I think we've done a good thing in, in our early days. We've sort of politicised a generation of people start talking. Um, the talk, it's time for talking's done. Get joining. And I'll ask you again, if you can join for Britain, I want us to bring people into the movement, make the movement political, 
And they will fear it and start, which you said, in local councils, because I see this in the United States now. They're concentrating on local councils, they're concentrating yeah. on local schools, getting in the governing bodies, getting, getting in there, picking certain towns and cities. You've got to commit. I mean, you, you, have, you have celebrities, politicians, who pop up at the general election, pick a seat and sort of give that seat a few weeks of attention. People are not stupid. They know you're not really here for us. You're here because you want to be an MP and we happen to be a seat that you think is attractive. That's not how this is going to work. It doesn't work. We're going to start at the very bottom. We're going to make our names in council seats. And it's not easy. It's really not easy. But if you can get into a council seat, as I intend to, and make my name that way, make the people trust me. And do you know how you make people trust you, Tommy? You tell them the truth. Simple as that, warts and all. If I get elected in May, for example, I will tell the people who I represent Everything that's going on, absolutely everything. I won't hide a thing. If I can't do something, I'll tell them why. You just treat people like adults and speak to them like adults and they'll trust you. If we can do that, we have a shot at Parliament. We really we have to commit to people and a place, not just drop in at election time. That's how it's done. And I, I don't trust many people. I trust you, Henry, I, <laughs> because you've, you've stood staunchly for years. And as I said, again, an apology for the betrayal of you, Kim. Um, well, I, look, I made you know, that decision and I've got egg on my face. You've said you were let down by Jared Batten. It's not Jared. Not by, the person, not by Jared. Yeah, not by Jared. Jared was let down, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Look, we have a new party here. There's no old boy network in it that's going to stop us doing what we need to do. I've never backed down, ever. Neither of you. We know what the truth is, we're going to tell it. There's no one to stop us. This is our party. So there's no one in the background. There's no established order in the background to stop us doing what we have to do. How have we? How have you ended up here? You were at Full Britain. You yeah. You started it. You started as. as I started a, in Labour. Uh, I was nearly ten years active for the Labour Party. I feel like I have to make up for it now. I sort of have a moral debt to pay. But they, as soon as you start mentioning things like this, they when, when did, can you explain out. when? Why you left Labour? When? There was a few, a few different things. I used to think because you're young and idealistic, aren't you? And you think, well, look, if I just keep hammering away, they'll see the truth. They'll see what the reality is and they'll change. I used to think they just don't know. So if they know, they'll change. I realised they did know and they were covering it up. So things like FGM, grooming gangs, Sharia law, all this stuff, I, I thought if they knew they wouldn't be doing this, but they did know. And it was the realisation that they did know and they were actively covering it up and they relied on, in so many areas, they relied on a Muslim vote, for example, so they just let Muslims do whatever, no matter what harm they were causing to kids. They let them do whatever they like because they were so... And then they, they, they were immersed in it, the, together. The grooming gangs and the Labour Party are as one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And that realisation over the years, I thought, you know what? I cannot continue with this. My morals, my principles are completely all over the place here. I have to decide who I am. That's generally... Who am I? Am I going to stay in this? There's absolutely no way. What year did you leave? Uh, 2015, I think. What year did you speak at Oxford University? Same year. Wow, that's when I saw you. Yeah, and that's... And I was it. like... <laughs> that was Who's what this? did it, actually. Who's this? That was pretty much what did it. Because they wouldn't even... People I'd known for years actually stopped talking to me after Oxford. Just stopped talking to me. No it debate. Was a great, it was no a great discussion. discussion. Anyone, anyone who hasn't watched it, type in Anne-Marie Waters... Uh, Oxford Union, if you can find it, it's probably been censored. No, it's, it? it's no, still on there. Because Oxford, they won't censor Oxford God. University. No, it's a great, it was great. It's my first time I saw you, and I was like, who's this? And I started following you then. Um, yeah, I started following you then. So you, you, left, you, left, you left then, you left the Labour Party, um, but you continued in your fight for... I joined UKIP. It's actually Lord Pearson who suggested to me you should join UKIP. Um, and I had lunch with him, and I wasn't sure, because I wasn't too sure about... I was, I was, I was pro a European referendum, but didn't really feel passionately about the EU. So I thought, well, if I'm going to join UKIP, I have to understand the EU much better than I do. So I spent some time researching it, found out what a monster it was, and thought, right, that's it. In all good conscience, I can join UKIP. Um, Lord Pearson and Baroness Cox were my referees the first time I stood for Parliament in uh, Lewisham East. I came third. Uh, and that was that, really. And I went then. Paul Nuttall then deselected me when Lewisham selected me again for the, the next general election. He deselected me just overnight. Establishment Paul Nuttall, yeah. who turned up dressed in a tweed yeah. jacket into a working class estate. Yes, yeah. It, it, clueless. How clueless oh, can you be? Never watch it. So, yeah, I thought after he did that, I thought, right, I'm going to challenge him for the leadership. And as it turned out, I didn't have to, because um, 
if the whole thing collapsed and they had a leadership election. To get rid of you? Well, they had a leadership election to get because he resigned because they had such a bad election result. Um, and the whole, I just, I, I'm not going to talk about this for too long, but throughout the leadership election, I was winning, and it was clear I was winning from the very early stages. I was, I had the best manifesto, I was given the best speeches at the hostings, and then they convened emergency committees. I mean, you wouldn't believe what went on. Seriously. The rumours they spread about me, and, and Farage was involved in it, I have no doubt at all. Um, and then came Henry Bolton, some oh. posh boy, to, to sort of kick me off, kick the momentum from out, out from under my feet. Um, he was dreadful, actually. But can, I, can I ask, um, what, what, what city are you focusing on? Hartlepool. Hartlepool. Hartlepool is where I live, it's where I've put down my roots. Um, it's where I intend to get elected. And I will. I mean, it's hard work. People say to me, you know, the lefties will always slag you off and she loses election after. Of course you do. It's called life. You know, you, you, you're not going to... If I put my tail between my legs and ran yeah, off home every time I lost, then where would, you know, where would going, we be? Of course you keep going and you keep going until you get it. To, to, to people who... Because as a movement, I think we created a movement, it took years, and they need to be active and we need to give them things to do, which I've failed at over the years. So if there's people watching this who might be getting excited, thinking, right, what are we going to have to do? Can we guarantee them that we're going to plan events, we're going to plan things for them to do over the summer? So we're going to really, really cause a storm. I've got elections coming up in May. On the 5th of May, there's a council election in Hartlepool. I need boots on the ground for that. I really do. That what you just it's, it's a matter of getting people out, knocking on doors, putting leaflets through doors. It's a logistical exercise. I need people for it. I can promise anyone watching this, I promise you, I promise everyone watching this, if I get elected to that council in May, I will run a muck. Every single month I will go to council meetings and challenge them on where they're spending their money. Why are they getting six figures while you're taxing the poorest people in this town? More and more and more. Why? I, every month, I will run amok. I absolutely will. And in a few years' time, I'll go into the House of Commons and do exactly the same thing. There is no one in elected chambers, which is where the power is. All right. Which is where the power is. You know, you go out to protest, and you think, well, it, protests are great and they're important because they bring us together. But what are we protesting for? We're protesting to ask the politicians to do something differently. Why are we asking them? Why don't we take the power ourselves and do things differently ourselves instead of asking the people who caused all the problems in the first place to somehow change take the power off them and you do it at the ballot box that's how it's done that's what we'll do i'm excited and my, my thing was my thing for every one of you watching is that i'm going to continue with my my series my episodes of the rape of britain which is great we're going to make a lot of noise but there has to be a political answer and it's about taking that crowd and you who watched it, and everyone of you who's awake and understands what's going on in this country, understands even now with COVID, it's, it's spread from, it's spread from, they wanted to silence us. Yeah. We were the first talking against their globalist agenda, which was the, the flood in our country of Islam. And that has progressed now, and everyone's witnessing it. So it's, it's moved the goalpost. So hopefully now, if you're watching, get involved. We'll give you things to get involved in. I'm excited. Get me elected in May. Get, get me elected That's the target, May. okay? That's, That's everyone's target. Step. First step, then I'll cause such a stir in Hartlepool that we'll move on to Parliament. I'll be the MP for Parliament within the next five years. If we cause enough of a stir, I will. And then I'll go into Parliament and cause exactly the same stir there. It can be done. So if you're, if you're from Hartlepool, <coughs> we're coming. We are. <laughs> and to the local we media are. in Hartlepool, stop, don't lie, OK? Just, <laughs> just treat it as it is, OK? It's people who care about their country and love it who want to make change. As simple as that. So that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. And we won't rest until we do. So if you're watching, you'll have to understand how important it is. For a political party to grow, it needs members. It doesn't just need members, it, it won't just help it grow. What it will also do is shock them. When thousands and tens of thousands joined UKIP, it scared them. Yeah? Which is why they had the NEC, the establishment of the NEC, cut it off. They got rid of Jared Bratton and they killed the party. Okay? Let's replace that. <laughs> let's replace it with big smiles. And let's have fun doing it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. It's great. I feel like I'm back. You are. I know because I had a little bit of a spell there, man. I feel like I'm back, and I'm I feel like I'm back. Yeah, it's and good. I haven't been a bit, been anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Sort of excitement. I know what you mean. New start. New start. New energy. Let's do it.
um, we've got a lot of work to do. So if you're watching it and you're thinking of what to do, join Fort Britain. Yeah, I know so many people that want to come up and say they, they want to shake your hand silently or they want to say, look, I agree with you. You must get it. I agree, I agree with you. I support what you're doing. What can we do? What can we do? Join. That's what you can do. Yeah. Join the party. Help the party. Get behind any event we're holding. Spread the word. Make sure people know the name for Britain. Make sure people understand there's a political option now that is not going to cower away. No. It's not going to be taken down from within um, because neither of us actually care. And we're full on 100% and there's not much you can do. <laughs> so <laughs> we, We've taken everything there is to take at this yeah, yeah. point, so there's nothing left to lose. I have to we're, tell with it. We're ready. Yeah, we are. Join for Britain, Henry. Cheers, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> are you fed up with the attack on free speech? Are you fed up with the tyranny being imposed on our population with COVID? Are you fed up with the abuse of power by politicians? Are you fed up of all of it? There's only one way you can teach them a lesson. There's only one thing they'll understand, and that's a political alternative. If you want to strike fear into them, if you want them to worry, then we need a political option. And that has to be with Fort Britain and Anne-Marie Waters. I've stood and listened to her. She's been tried and tested time and time again. Never back down. Always been fierce, always been fearless. And the speech she gave at our last event, where she said, I will not rest until the day I get into Parliament. I looked at her and I knew she meant it. And that's why I made the decision to come into this party. And I'm asking every one of you to do the same. Join Fort Britain.